and starting there it is. Yeah, I just realized that it was Super Bowl day today, and uh, yeah, my buddy had just called me right in between uh, breaks on that, uh, and he was like, uh, "It's probably gynocentric in his nature, but he's such a blue pill guy." <laughs> that uh, he doesn't realize it's gynocentric in his nature. He uh, his son was supposed to come over today, mm. and for the Super Bowl, and we all used to do these Super Bowl events. Oops, let me turn that off. Yeah, I forgot to do the thing. So yeah, he's uh, his son just canceled out on him. He went and bought all these steaks and these great things and party dips probably and. Uh, expecting this day to happen and it's not it's just he's like bumming now this isn't going to happen <laughs> really super super bowl is off yeah super bowl is off i can i can only imagine for a young kid his his son is the same age as my son maybe a year younger so he's 23 the only thing that could keep a 23 year old away from the super bowl is what <laughs> tail <laughs> tail <laughs> Uh, I couldn't even, you know, I didn't even know if I could imagine it when I was that age missing a sporting event of that magnitude because of tail. That's a tough call. <laughs> to... it, would be, it would be a real tough call, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's like, oh, my friends are sitting around drinking beer and eating them really great little chips with the dip and everything. And I'd be like, sit here with her and listen to her cat. Listen to her talk about her cat, or go to the Super Bowl. That would that would be that'd be a no-brainer for me. Now it's like, see a lady. <laughs> These days, you've had a lot of. Uh, <clears throat> we in the past decade or two, it's been a huge phenomenon of like <clears throat> women embracing sports, and so they think that they're like they're like uh, they hang with the guys now, right? They go yeah. they go hang with the guys at the sporting events and everything, you know, whatever. Yeah, there was a there was a push by the NFL to do family fr family friendly, and they got this family friendly thing going now. But that's just woman friendly, isn't it? And uh, that's what they were shooting at the market of getting women to go buy tickets, and uh, exactly the pink, the pink uh, football shirts and everything. And then they made it. Uh, uh, who is that? Uh, Jessica Valente or one of those Steinman is in charge of uh, making. Gloria? The yeah, Gloria Steinman is in charge of making the NFL less violent to women. And it's like, oh my geez. god! And now, now we see. Uh, but you you see men moving away from that thing too. The the sports uh, that that masculine uh, you know image, the icon of the American football player. They, they're they're uh, as much as they start bringing. And women are terrible sports fans. I mean, they will not. Have, they will absolutely not buy season tickets or. They might watch a game, and they're picking the teams uh, who's going to win based on the shirt color. Like, oh, the guys in red are so going to win because it's a red shirt, <laughs> and I like red, you know. Yeah, I, I find it a lot of uh, insincere, you know, that's really insincere. They, they're they doing it to get at guys, right? The whole point is to get, Yeah, uh, to get into the male space and uh, yeah. kind of experience that thing. And then in in that they're screwing it up, as usual. As usual, as par. There are no more male spaces. Yeah. Just like they're messing up Bitcoin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, they're trying to get into that too now, huh? They're gonna they're gonna feminize Bitcoin. What do you think? Uh, how how would they do that? How would they go about uh, ruining Bitcoin? They just kind of make it into the dollar, you know, so they can buy shoes. <laughs> I mean, they they just want to cut to the pie is the bottom line. They can see, you know, they sniff out, they sniff out the money, and uh, you know there will be a lot of money going in that direction over the next few years, and they they want to make sure they're there so that they're they can. Set and <laughs> yeah. They know about it, you know, because it was kind of a hidden secret Bitcoin for now. When how do you extract bitcoins, you know? Uh, I right. suppose, yeah, well, they'll yeah, figure that's... out where to spend it, we, you know, show us how to spend it. <laughs> <laughs> Overstock.com. Overstock.com, where we can get, uh, oh, oh Slitcoin. <laughs> he says that again. Slitcoin, yeah, that is funny. Yeah. Oh, my Slitcoin God. Indeed. Yeah. Was Bitcoin, was, was it like a male thing, totally? 
or oh, they just I perceive mean, it as a male thing. And then when they when they learned about it, it must have been the patriarchy that was hiding this thing from them. Well, that's what they spin it now. Absolutely, it's I just can't. They do now. They they come in. It's a Johnny Come Lately scenario, you know. Yeah. You had all these guys slaving away with code and hacking all 24 hours, you know, and you had this brilliant, you know, whoever it was, Satoshi Nakamoto, whatever, presumably a guy, invent the invent the whole thing, which is super technical and, and complex, and. Uh, and then, you know, just like with the uh, gaming community and computers and Comic-Con and everything, once it starts to get some, some money running through it, like, oh, I got to go be a part of Bitcoin now. Oh, yeah, we invented that shit. <laughs> we invented uh, oh, my gosh, yeah. They're, uh, you know, where there's resources, they're going to seek it out. And that's uh, what we say around here, uh, you know, hide your resources. Bitcoin was a way to do that. Now it's, uh, you know, as soon as uh, it'll it'll be introduced as a method of payment pretty soon to Health and Human Services because, uh, you know, there's going to be all these guys <laughs> having babies. with, uh, And then you could use, insert your Bitcoins into Health and Human Services and they can translate them into dollars, what you... Uh, what you owe on your child support and everything. I'm sure that's a way of, you know, I'm sure that they haven't figured that out in Health and Human Service yet, how they can extract that. Yeah, well, that's that's probably one of the risks of women getting involved because, as we know, they're going to talk, the first thing they're going to want is regulation, yeah. right? <laughs> so the first thing they'll do is bring the government in fast and strong. So, yeah. It's, yeah, that def that defeats the idea of Bitcoin, doesn't it? The, the government's, you know, not supposed to be regulating this thing as a, uh, as a way. Well, they they do regulate all comrades. They have that inscribed in the, uh, in the constitution that they have a right to regulate all comrades. But they take that way too far, don't they? Yeah, yeah. It's I, I hate that that's in the constitution that they can regulate commerce. Yeah, that's one of the things that you know if if. If there was an MRA cause, that that's one of the things they should be working on too. The you know get you see little kids now, uh, with police officers closing down uh, Kool Aid stands because that that breaks the constitutional law. There, uh, they're, they're, you're you're taking out money, you're not paying taxes. What are you doing here? You know, they're, so they're shutting down the Kool Aid stands and uh, stuff like that. For uh, it's a good use of our tax dollars, boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, text those little kids, you know. Uh. <laughs> Does, uh, is Bernie, is Bernie, Bernie, you on the line over there? Yeah, I'm here, guys. I'm kind of half asleep. I'm trying to get my yeah, shit together. I was, to I was just gonna. Do you got any Bitcoin? Are you a? Uh, oh yeah, man. I'm. I've been in Bitcoin since they were like twenty five each. I'm sitting pretty with Bitcoin. Oh, dude, really? Yeah. 25. I thought I got in late at 25. I thought I was way late, but I thought I'd better buy a few just to say I have them just in case. And then it started climbing, and I learned more. And I'm, I'm still convinced that being able to buy a Bitcoin for less than $100,000 is a bargain. Wow. Uh, That's my position, in case you were wondering. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I know very little about it. Uh, uh it's still a kind of a foreign concept to me. I know I have a Bitcoin account somewhere, and I have some Bitcoins in it. But uh, just make sure you know how to save them and spend them. Don't you know? Because they they'll be valuable someday. Yeah. No, I'm I'm impressed, man. You got in that early. That's freaking awesome. Um, yeah. How? So that was like 2010, circa or 11? Was it? Um, yeah, I'm thinking two and a half years ago, maybe three. Three and a half at the Two most. Half, three. Okay. Now the, I know there was what, a big upsurge where it went to like sixteen hundred at a. Yeah, it went to point. like fourteen and a half. If I remember half. right, and it, it came down pretty quickly. That was when uh, China moved in, and okay. it just it was a lot of interest, and it just shot up from. Uh, I think it had been around two hundred fifty, and it just climbed, climbed all the way to about uh, twelve, fourteen hundred, whatever it was. Came back down, hung around at eight hundred, and it's been slowly trickling downward ever since. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, how do they mark that? Uh, what, what what is that gauged on? I don't the, even know. There's a couple of the big, the major exchanges. Whatever the 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 current sale price, or uh, you know, whatever they just aggregate the the major exchanges. Whatever the average price is. Right. 
like any like any other currency exchange. It's just uh, whatever yeah. whatever the market dictates. Market to who's interested. If it, no one's interested, then okay, I mean, yeah. Even Google has a Bitcoin on their ticker now. You know. Oh really? Oh, yeah, right. like uh, there's the symbol is BTC. Like you're looking up a stock that you can look. Like I, I watch the Bitcoin price from uh, Google now. Okay, so it's actually in the stock exchange now. So it well, is a, a well, part it's of not a stock, but it, it, you can follow Google like Finance. You mean right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, a lot of it's starting to be picked up by major, by more major, you know, institutions or whatever. Um, the uh, yeah, and it's, to some extent, though, the price has to do with the cost of mining it, right? So it's expensive to mine them, and so that kind of sets a floor on the price to some extent. Yeah, and um, the uh, the the miners, of course. I mean, back in the day, I mean, these guys were mining like getting three, four, five bitcoins every hour. Now, the value goes up, but the number of bitcoins they're getting is less. But they're still that's that's why the system works for those miners because they're still incentivized to continue buttressing up the network with their mining rigs all over the world. That's why the Bitcoin network is bigger than Google. A lot of people don't know that. Oh. Okay. It's hard to even fathom that, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it's actually ten times bigger than Google. Yeah. Now, now you talk about mining. Can you guys explain that a little bit? Uh, so you know, the novice like me knows about uh, about Bitcoin nov mining. Yeah. Well, mining's not really the right word. I mean, the best way to look at it is um, it's mathematical um, mining. Yeah. It's yeah. Math In other words, the the amount of the currency is being being released to the market over time, rather than just all at once. So the miners are there. Um, doing all this mathematical shit, but what they're doing is they're actually verifying transactions. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that actually, like when you spend Bitcoin, they're the one, they're, they're, that's where the computing power that's actually verifying the transactions. Okay, so there's a conversion right. from the dollar or say the yen or whatever into Bitcoin or from finances. And uh, uh, I've seen a lot of, uh, there were, they were mining Bitcoin from uh, from uh, sites, so what you were earning on your site automatically went to Bitcoin. So it was an exchange from the dollar to the Bitcoin, but a lot of people were doing it that way, and uh, they were doing it through a uh, uh, so web generation, some kind of web generation, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, there were some interesting aspects of that. How they and it was t basically taking nothing and then doing a job and then making it into the Bitcoin, and then uh, that you were generate. You were, they called it mining at that point. I'm okay. not sure how, how that happened. Maybe it's dis distributed mining or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of really interesting ideas, and people have uh, some unique uh, ways of uh, making generating and making it, and uh, uh, yeah, kind of neat stuff if you. If you like that stuff, yeah, yeah, it's the uh, <clears throat> as they print us into oblivion. It does seem like you know, it does seem like gold and Bitcoin are going to be pretty important in the future. I mean, it's just uh, yeah, like uh, that's what we need. We need like a Greece or an Argentina. As soon as these people figure out how how much safer Bitcoin already is compared to their currency. Right, and then you see like a, a whole nation just cave into Bitcoin. In fact, I, I predict you will see a third world country announce they don't have a currency anymore. Their people are just using Bitcoin, and it costs the country more money um, yeah. to keep their yep. currency alive than it does to just kill it. And and like um for instance, like Kenya back in the day, Kenya was um their currency was so bad you had people trading phone minutes as currency. Right. Yeah. They're just they mm -hmm. just they improvise the currency because their own currency sucks so bad. And uh, they they started using phone minutes in pays as they were called, and uh, so you can see people yeah. have a natural uh, uh, a, a natural inclination to have a solid currency. They'll even make one up out of thin air if they have to. Oh yeah. You know, so that they I can, can represent you know trade to each other. Totally. Yeah. Now I can see that working out, and uh, if the feminists were really trying to get into. Uh, to Bitcoin, and they wanted the Argentina would actually be the the very place to do that right now because the uh, failed economy that the feminists actually assisted in failing. Right. And not a lot of people know about that uh, cooperative economics that they had placed in there. 
as the, the the idea of feminists based on care ethics and everything like that, and then they have basically communism, right? Or socialism. Yeah. yeah, So they were working on that cooperative. Uh, uh, is cooperative or uh, yeah, uh, whatever yeah. it was, and then it failed. Now they're they're prepped and ready to bring in Bitcom, the secondary, this prop it up and save. Sure. But, but ooh, and I can see the same old thing playing out uh, there, sort of. Yeah, yeah. The uh, you know the what was that female uh, president they had? She yeah. did a good job, right? <laughs> oh yeah, the Madonna movie was made about her, and then yeah. But if you follow that whole thing, uh, uh, it, it was very interesting in the economics that they had, to, and it was very very feminist in its nature. That that was the actual economy that the feminists had drawn up that was going to supposed to work. And uh, nah, nah. Uh, but you know, when you're dealing with uh, Germany, America, Japan, China, these these aren't uh, uh, these are like uh, these these economic systems are authoritarian, and they're 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 what leads. You know, they're just going to throw these little uh, countries under the bus, and that's what they did with Greece and Argentina, and uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how many times <clears throat> the definition of insanity, right? If you look at how many times these socialisms and communisms have been put into place and how fucked up the results are every fucking time. Like that that's why, you know, to that extent anyone who's still of that mind is literally insane. Literally insane because you just can't learn no matter how many times, uh, you know, you got, I mean, you got Venezuela, you got Cuba, you got Argentina, you got so many examples to just look at and realize probably not the right thing to do. No, it's not. I was just trying to look that up real fast. It's, they mentioned it on Wikipedia about, but they're just moving into, yeah, this had failed, so they're just moving now, and, uh, they don't know. They they really don't know what they're doing. So they're just kind of running these little tests on uh, in places that they 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 you know they they can get into. Uh, oh God, that would be so horrible with Bitcoin, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a comment saying something about a problem with Bitcoin is that it's still a fiat currency at the end of the day. Um, I think. It's, I mean, we're talking I, I, about. Bitcoin and mining. Well, there's the question is raised: Is Bitcoin effectively a fiat currency still? Do you have an opinion on that, there, uh, Dr. Leonard? By the way, welcome, Dr. Leonard Nimoy. Thank you. Maybe I should play the um, devil's advocate tra transport song. <laughs> <laughs> Give it! Well, don't lose the transporters. <laughs> yeah, I, but I uh, I have familiar. I'm familiar with Bitcoin, and uh, I just say it's a hobby. I don't think that it's a, a that it's the way. Or really, no. I mean, it can get ha it's hacked. It's been hacked. Um, hmm. You can lose your chain. Uh, you can go mine for days and find nothing. <laughs> okay. I, I, my proposal, or my what I submit is that it's not, okay, is it fiat or not? I would say Bitcoin, I'd, I'll argue that it's not fiat because fiat is worthless Like in reality. The only value that fiat has is the value we attach to it. Um, it's paper. It literally is paper, but we, we give it value. Um, yeah, gold is fiat. Gold can be seen as fiat, right? Exactly. Everything is fiat. It's just it, the only thing its value is what a human being they want to pay for it. They want to exchange for it. That's value is subjective. Absolutely, and and I I basically have, have brought it down to two things as to how um, say gold or Bitcoin why or or even dollars why do they become valuable? They become valuable because a a first starter thing they were they were kind of there you know, in the beginning, and then the network effect. So as soon as you have the network effect take place, that is what gives the value because, you know, the more people are using it, the more you can use it, et cetera, that kind of a thing. So 
Bitcoin doesn't have, it's like you can't hold it and go and do something with it. But the code, remember, information is value, right? And mm -hmm. so, so, you know, if you're to argue that a piece of metal is something that, by the way, if gold weren't used as money, there'd be way more than we need. Well, that's just one way of looking at it. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent here, but I think that the, the code, the actual coding has value. That's what I would say. And then also the network has value. And so in, in that sense, it's not just that we're giving it value. It actually has that quote unquote intrinsic value. But well, so one of one of the I don't want to say flaws, but technically it would be a flaw is that Bitcoin is out in the open, naked for the world to see. Whereas we don't have any fucking idea how banks and the government move our money around, how fucking flawed that whole system is. Right. How it, we have no idea how they're making that sausage. So any little thing that goes on with Bitcoin, see it can fail. No, you're what you're looking at is a totally naked system, and you're seeing the nuts and bolts of it. You, you, you don't see a pretty package. You're actually looking at the bare bones at all times, whereas what money is covered up by bullshit and propaganda, and God only knows. Um, so you know, a part of the uh, uh, adoption of Bitcoin, uh, a widespread adoption, is people need to be educated. Um, I have to, to be able to psychologically. With that. <laughs> they need to be able to psychologically handle. Um, a currency that's not cushioned by a bunch of propaganda because Bitcoin just doesn't have it. You can just look at the internet and look at the blockchain all by yourself and see what's going on. Right. You should be able yeah. to look at two things with a, with a fiat currency like that. and it, we, we know it's just a supply and demand. You should be able to look at what's being produced and a, and a gross product or something like that and, and a gross national product and, uh, and, and, and demand the demand for that that system and uh, you should be able to base it on that but right now with Bitcoin and the dollar a matter of fact uh, you can't see that because there's so many intricate things that play into it mm -hmm. yeah, yeah the um, I mean it's so corrupted I, when you think about the dollars and the it's it's such a social delusion I mean, they've, they're creating so much dollars. They're so worthless. They're yeah. so worthless. It's just the confidence that we put in them that gives them any value. And so money is always going to be about confidence. You know, it yeah. is. Yeah, but, it is. It, yeah. It's, yeah, it's about confidence right now. But what always really screwed me up with this whole system, and, and it just kind of takes me off of balance when I look at it, is uh, I look at supply and demand, and I look at what I often say lighter than air work is making and producing nothing. So how can you get a value from lighter than air work? Uh, yeah, I love that phrase, lighter than air work. It's so you know, true, man. We can we can do it on the internet. We can look at like okay, some lighter than air work is like uh, just uh, you know making a a web. So you have a product, you have a value in the product, and and then it doesn't it becomes not lighter than air work. It becomes an actual job where you have you have uh, you have something of value. And, but a lot of these jobs now that the government is is you know the female jobs they don't produce nothing but stress and then yeah it's like wow how can and then that offsets your 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 na gross national products and it offsets the idea of uh, of the money itself so it's it's actually should be getting smaller but it's not. And then, and then my head kind of explodes at that point. Is how where does the money come from now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's so much. I think that's the sign of a really corrupt civilization. Is when so much of the economy is non-productive jobs. You know, yeah, jobs that aren't really producing anything, but they are skimming a lot off of the, the those who are producing. Yes, they are skimming off the jobs. Like, oh well, you can you can say. Uh, Take for example a steel worker. He's making a steel product. The steel product's going to uh, to build a building, the structural steel inside of a building. And you got the steel workers come in and they're putting the rivets on there. And then we, from there, we have the lighter than air jobs that are the what you, the the female engineers that are uh, are going over the numbers and stats in their head. And, and uh, the uh, rivet guys are just ignoring them uh, because that's what you do to people like that. And uh, you know we're doing it right. Don't worry about it. But it's just skimming off that, 
and it's 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 uh, a yeah. it's regulations and it's uh it's how do we uh, do the paperwork the pigs and the dogs that figured out how to do the paperwork to skim off the whole system you know it all comes back to Animal Farm man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's all laid out there for us, crystal clear. We just have to see it, you know? Yeah, and then we looked at what didn't get done in that book and what did get done, and then the excess uh, that was, uh, you know, we got characters that symbolized people in the system, uh, you know, the, the other pigs, and then the horse. The horse was actually doing the, actually most of the work, and, the, uh, you know, the, the sheep were giving up. You know, there were solids there that the... We can we can look at that and get a good idea of what's going on now. And the windmill never got built, or the what did they call that? The the generator. They were looking to yeah, get a generator. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but they were supposed to build a second windmill to uh, to uh, to grind the the grain, which never got ground. And uh, it was like, oh, what a disaster this was, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've seen uh, at a former job. <clears throat> there's a the, there was a department like a regulatory area and it was just like a hundred percent female like they oh, just yeah. they love regulation it's like as long as they can you know sit in an office and basically tell people tell men who are actually building things how to you know not to do this or to do that they're they're happy you know oh yeah yeah and I can look at marketing and marketing uh, you know, some people say okay that's a lighter no it's not a lighter than their job because they got an actual product they're marketing the products the product is going. The sales is being generated from that, and uh, you got these actual salesmen. Uh, it's what's that show with uh, Mad Men was so kind of interesting to me mm -hmm. because of the whole economics with developing money through that uh, that that sales and service of marketing, and uh, and then you got the woman that came in, and what does she automatically want to do? Rise right to the top, fill one of those lighter than air jobs, and leech off the system. <laughs> Exactly. It's, it's it's just the pattern over and over and over and over again. Um, and and marketing. It's funny because basically women are natural marketers. Like they're, it's the one job that I think, or one of the you know one yeah. of the jobs that that I think women are naturally suited for because you know the makeup and like they're always basically selling sex, and so they can they can. <laughs> They go right into the the marketing sales role because they're like natural salespeople, you know. They're always just selling sex, and they're fucking good at it. <laughs> oh yeah, well they got a very good system of their own if they would embrace that system, you know, with the uh, uh, makeup, shoes, uh, you know, all that stuff that they do, the women do, and then it. it, it but they don't want to end their and their system. They want to, you know, right? Want to get into the steel mills and the. Uh, and we've seen disastrous results with this, with uh, uh, the woolen mills and the textile mills in the 70s and the 60s. Did they invade back then? What happened? Oh, yeah. It was uh, Well, the woolen mills uh, and the textile mills employed almost 60% of the females in our country. Uh, and you, I don't know how old you guys are, but I used to be, you probably got buildings around your town that someone will say, oh, well, that's the old woolen mill. You know, it's closed down. It's crumbling now, and uh, all that moved out. Uh, the females, uh, what they wanted was air conditioning. They wanted loft, so, softer, lighter work, and everything. And uh, it just they regulated the uh, them right out of the country. So at a certain point, it became more cost efficient to move it to Malaysia, and just do business there. Yeah. Rather than having to deal with uh, what the women wanted to regulate the shit out of it, you know, they and then they came up with uh, these justifiable means that uh, having air conditioning inside the woolly mills would actually uh, uh, shrink the clothes down better or shrink the cloth down better, and they come up with these crazy ideas, and uh, it, it was just a big, uh, it was just a big mess, and so we, you know. Uh, Owners, company owners will do the next logical thing, and it was the prelude to uh, to the exportation of most of America's jobs. Uh, you would have th thought during the 90s they would have looked at that and said, "Oh, well, look what, look what happened." We do see uh, right now, uh, since there is a need for uh, for female employment, and not all women will be paper pushers. Uh, they're bringing uh, two major companies that moved back into the the south areas where they do grow the cotton and they do have uh, uh, the, the you know the mills to actually uh, do the synthetic cloths and everything 
uh, there's two moving back. So that's kind of moving back into how to fill that that spot. But uh, I don't think feminists are going to realize that uh, <coughs> them jobs are hot, smelly, dirty jobs. But that's what they're going to be getting. <laughs> right. No, no, no. no. They're taking all the tech jobs. Yeah. There, there's a there, well. Yeah, they they did the same thing. Well, that's the same idea, isn't it? The the tech jobs were set up by all these, you know, really smart, wonderful guys that uh, figured out a new uh, way to uh, do the uh, a, a currency, a fiat currency. When you look at it, that's a tech a techno a techno currency, and uh, uh, now they're uh, with uh, what's that little girl that's always bitching about that? What's her name? Uh, Oh, like uh, Green? Anna Sarkeesian. Anna uh. Sarkeesian. Yeah, she was. The, she she looked at it and said, "Oh, yeah, there's there's resources to be had now there." Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. got to get part of that. Got to go steal me some of that. Yeah. yeah got to go get me some of that. And they all want to be yeah. company. Hey, well, then. it's it's back because I I don't know if I shared it uh, on my videos. I'm was downgraded. Because they wanted to have uh, female IT techs. Yeah, oh man! A lot of that now. So it's it's like a cop. They go, you get a desk job. Well, the I well the women go out in the field. Unbelievable, man! It's so it's it makes me ill because it's such a lie. They they're lying that they're discriminated against, and so they get favoritism. But they were already favored in the first place, so it's just quadruple, quadruple, quintuple favoritism. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, and the whole those, the whole yeah. Those jobs actually take one skill that seems to evade women too: mathematics. <laughs> yeah, but that's what's happening now. Is you know with the whole encouraging women into STEM, and you know when they when they say encourage. You know what they mean? They mean, you know, affirmative action. That's what they mean. Affirmative action. So now they're affirmative actioning women into STEM. Sure, you can do that, you know, you can do that. And but it's such a insult to all the the males who who genuinely just like did it, you know? They created tech. They continue to do tech and engineering and everything because they work their balls off. You know, like math is hard, you know? Like uh, programming is hard work, and then to hear them complain that it's like we don't, <laughs> we're not in tech because you don't let us, rather than because they don't do the, you know, the hard work is like, oh man, it's yeah. really, it's really hatred against males, as yeah. we know. Yeah. Now, what's the new uh, programs that are female friendly to write that stuff? Uh, uh, McCoy, you'd probably know. Uh, what do they call mm -hmm. that? Uh, I'm sorry. What was that? The new programs that uh, kind of uh, you don't have to do more of the writing anymore. It's just kind of in the program, and you, it's uh, more female-friendly programs. Uh, Python is that it? Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, all object-oriented or something. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. All code requires some skill, but they do have like wizards and GUIs that. You type it into the GUI, and the GUI will give you hints. So it's like the computer pro the computer program you program, you put your code into, tells you what to do. Okay. So it kind of coaches you along, right? Right. So the guys design that. <laughs> so that now women can come and play. <laughs> Python programming language, yeah. yeah that's but object-oriented programming is supposedly the easiest programming. Object oriented is that what they call it now? I remember yeah. talking about it. I, I'm not much into it. Uh, uh, I, I do have an animator that I used to draw. <laughs> I, I used to draw metal parts and stuff with. You know, uh, it's it's really great for it too because it gives me a three dimensional view without having to go into a CAD uh, system. Uh, but that's yeah. about my that's the extent of my uh, my my programming knowledge is how to use a, a anime animator. To use to draw things on. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a secret anime fan, Traversable. Yeah, I just drew a, a program last night. I was, uh, it was, it's a, it's a round object with uh, two bearings on it, and then uh, I know I'm gonna start building it in my garage here. It's, uh, yeah, that's really? my, that's my anime. <laughs> right on. You gonna get a 3D printer and print that? 
Uh, no, it's actually too big. It's got. It's going to be about six feet tall. And right. uh, wow. as soon as I buy the metal for it and start cutting, I have to order the metal cut because I don't have a cutter in my garage. Uh, <laughs> that would take up most of my garage. <laughs> but uh, <sighs> yeah. So what do you what do you what do you think as as women, females, um, feminism, gyno, everything invade? Now that they're, they're, it's a full invasion now towards tech, STEM, engineering, all the things, you know, the conventionally a little bit of male um, sanity. So as, as they come and consume those like locusts, what do we do? Yeah, what can you do? It's like uh, we can look back at uh, the tech of the past and see what happened. Uh, yeah. And it's pretty invasive, so it's like uh, it's almost like locusts. How can you stop them? You're swatting that one while a hundred are coming flying by you. You know, uh, it's just something that's going to happen. And uh, I think the quality will will tell is telltale, won't it be? Yeah, that may be. A, yeah, everything. But it's such a bummer because it's just like society. They can always like, you know. Um, There'll be plenty of room for 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 quality to degrade over time, but it'll never be easy to like make it to i to identify where it came from. But yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll be the same thing as always. Uh, the men will become the utilities, doing the doer stuff, and then the women will be the have the lighter than air jobs where they take all credit for everything. Uh, and um, I think the men will capitulate to that uh, because you know the vagina. <laughs> yeah, there's just a uh, interesting comment in the section. It says, "By King David, female control theory reads that it is women who oppress female sexuality for their own interests." I think female that's a control theory reads that it is women that oppress. Well, oh yeah, for their own interests. Right? Yeah, they uh, they know it's an addiction for men, and uh, right. it's a. Uh, how scarcity, you, they, they make it more slut shammy is scarce, yeah. to make it more scarce. Right, yeah, it's like uh, it's like you could look at it as uh, drugs or crack, you know, crack. I like to say crack because that's more better explains it, you know, if the, the demand for crack goes down, then uh, all the drug dealers will pay more for it. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> uh, looks like Shining is watching the Super Bowl. Oh, no, it's Misanthrope. This is uh, it's five oh six. The Super Bowl starts at uh at uh six thirty today. Different time zones. <laughs> oh, yeah, it starts at six thirty for me. I'm pretty sure. Let's uh, take a take a show of hands in the in the chat room. Who's planning on watching the Super Bowl today? Uh, doesn't look like anybody. <laughs> <laughs> MGTOWs just aren't into into uh, pro pro football sports. I, I just uh, I think it's uh, me and Sparky Fister are the only ones that are uh, are really you know gun ho uh, football fans. But I see it as a MGTOW yeah. market. A MGTOW market? Yeah, it's uh, one of the it's one of the few markets out there that hasn't uh, really. They have no idea what MGTOW is. And uh, they are super, super gynocentric. <laughs> Blue pill males. Yeah, they're because they're caught up in that that uh, very warped sense of masculinity, right? They think that watching sports makes them masculine. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, the, you know, when you look at the whole concept of uh, the cheerleaders and the, uh, you know, they got their cheerleaders, you know, cheering them on, go and. Uh, you know the the alpha males, and then uh, you know you have the leader alpha male, and then uh, it all just kind of works down to you know bringing home the bacon, you know. Uh, totally. Uh, but that's what they want, you know. Uh, I think uh, I was thinking before we were having a uh, we were having a discussion of one thing, and I thought, you know, if feminism gets what they want. Uh, doesn't that kind of uh, we we kind of hit on it before uh, when they get what they want? Isn't it going to screw up their system? That's a very interesting 
um, I you know thing to consider uh, because I mean the whole thing it's like they're um, biting the horse that feeds them right they're looking right. at gift horse in the mouth um, I think the underlying presumption is that men are so hopeful hopelessly addicted to women that it doesn't that no amount of abuse will ever change change that you know I think that's the idea and so it could it could backfire in the rare circumstance that men said fuck it but I don't know I don't know how likely that is yeah you 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 the only thing that could backfire would be a make out attitude men going now oh, the juice is kind of getting expensive here you know it's not worth the squeeze anymore and uh, right but we see it happening all over. Uh, it was, we went back over. That's why the uh, female jobs replacing male, male jobs idea. But uh, somebody's gonna. Somebody always has to do the work. I guess that'll be the working caste system. <laughs> and I was speaking of that. Um, you know, I used to be in the field and stuff like that. Well, recently, now that they have uh, more female techs. They go in teams now. I used to be they used to go as an individual, but now you go in as as teams. So a guy and a girl goes to go to see the user. A guy and a girl goes where? Goes to see the user to to fix their computer. Oh, Why? So yeah, I can see it's uh, showing her how to do his job. Yeah, so it used to be a training thing for like. Maybe a month or two, you go as a team, but now it's always a team. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's hilarious, you're man. Making yourself a, that's planned obsolescence <laughs> of the male in that situation. You know, he's showing a woman how to do his job and planning yeah. his obsolescence. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, it's like so now, and and, it, and like you're saying earlier, it costs twice as much because you got you got to pay two people to do the job of one, right? Right, and they could have just paid, uh, said, oh, well, you've been here for seven years as an intern, uh, paid the uh, medical, and it would be the same price as two people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're chopping someone's job in half and making it into two jobs. They're not paying medical? Well, when I was an intern, they weren't. They weren't? But now I'm, I'm full staff, but that... That's the, what would you consider a, a lighter than air job? Is just a desk job. Okay. Right. Pushing papers. Pushing papers. Point, telling people what to do. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some jobs are, are some some desk jobs are some jobs aren't like a, uh, as long as there's a product at the end of it that that's right. a useful product that would be the weight of the product's value in society. Uh, uh, I don't right. generally. I don't think a lot of these jobs that women do. Uh, they don't. You know, well, in health and human services, we have uh, two million of them around our country. I think it's about two million right now. Uh, two point two, I think. Uh, and their job is to export stress. <laughs> they export stress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's just saleable, saleable stress. <laughs> <laughs> That's the American product now. Is is we export stress? Yeah, stress on the system and stress on everything. Uh, that was a big joke around my community. Uh, uh, I live in one of the one of the communities that lost uh, its steel mill and f both Ford and GM. And then uh, they were holding up a sign. Uh, somebody put a sign right above when you're entering the county. You know, they got the county sign. Mm -hmm. Someone put a sign under it. It said. Uh, Said Lorain County exporting stress. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I I guess that was it was a feminist enclave, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they seen it coming. They seen it coming. What what the destruction? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, funny that uh, <clears throat> we kind of got it before here. The rest of the it kind of came around. This was the birthplace of uh, what is called uh, the states use it. They'll use their name and they'll say uh, like Minnesota Works. 
uh, the Minnesota Works program. Right. That, uh, Detroit Works, Chicago Works. They all they, they all use the same program, and uh, right here in this county is where they uh, where they wrote the original uh, the original program and put it in as a uh, pilot program in Ohio. And then it worked out, and then everybody else kind of grabbed hold of that. All the other states started doing it. Uh, that here and uh, they had one other. Uh, where is it at Michigan? They were doing it in Michigan too, and both of those. You look at Detroit, and you look at this, uh, and they both look so similar. It's like desolate, barren lands of Health and Human Services just eating everything, and all the all the corporations have left. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That is a microcosm of what's happening to our broader economy, huh? Yeah, yeah. You wanna if you want to see what's gonna happen in your community soon if this thing keeps going the way it is, you can just uh come or just call me up on the phone and I will uh I will you can just go look and see what happened in this community and that's your future uh for you know all the all the rest of the states. Uh, yeah it's it's rather yeah, there's a lot of waste in government service. Oh yeah. Yeah. But there there is a small group of people there that that actually do do work and it's yeah. usually guys <laughs> it's usually guys yeah the tech guys uh, yeah uh, yeah they're doing the actual computers so the girls don't have to you know do anything but uh, uh, I love how they all they all want to be ad administrators the building <laughs> right they maintain the building I love how they all want to be administrators. They yeah, I want to administrate. Yeah. The power. Like, that's not even a job. What the fuck is yeah. that? Yeah, that's uh, That's what I am. You're an administrator? Cannot... Yeah. But you're an IT administrator. That's a yeah. real thing. <laughs> you have to actually know something. Yeah. Now we look at we could get a great example of that as Alyssa Myers, isn't it? From Yahoo? Totally. Totally. She's like, okay, I'm just gonna come in here and administrate the hell out of everything. <laughs> Exactly. And they're like they're like uh, they haven't been doing so good. <laughs> oh, they've been doing terrible, uh, terrible. I hate her because she took away my sports forum. <laughs> oh yeah, did they? They took that out of Yahoo, out of the Yahoo uh, forums. Yeah, you, know, you used to better go. You know, you had your own forum. You made your own forum, and you could never monetize it. But it was just kind of cool because a hundred, two hundred guys would show up and talk about sports all day. And you could just kind of sit there, and it was cool because you got to know the guys. And then one day we came in, and they were all gone. And uh, Melissa Myers was giving that – that uh, she used the silver bullet in there, too. She said, these are where men, pedophiles, gather. And then she, But it was just to get rid of the uh, – get rid of those forum, forums and make them uh, more mobile phone friendly is why she did it. And then that failed. Uh, just recently it came out that her mobile phone products uh, just failed terribly. Because well, you take away the original product. The original product was uh, was the forums where, and then she just didn't see it. She just didn't see what the product was. <laughs> it didn't have enough cats, enough kittens on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no babies and kittens. You know. Uh, <laughs> what, what good is it? I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. Footballs. What, are, what is this football thing, you know, and this baseball thing? But, uh, yeah, it was linked to a Yahoo used to have one of the best, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. They used to have one of the best sports forums uh, out of all the, even Google. I would say it far surpassed Google and MSN. It was just a great, uh, everybody was getting their information from Yahoo. And then after she came there, she just killed it. And then now you look at their, their joke of uh, sports forums and uh uh, the, the writers that are over there, it's just a joke. Yeah, that's that's the a, a classic example of female influence, man. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what they're not selling is they're not selling ads. They're, no one's putting their ads there anymore, and that was, you know, part of their product, how they made money, you know. Uh, uh, but, you know, everybody gets a little Yahoo app now. That that What does that sell? You know, it's nothing. That yeah oh so you're talking uh, about the Yahoo app yeah. that that does sell stuff it's just stuff that you it's not yours that sells your information yeah like you just said a fashion show it's a fashion show and they're selling your information or girl products and, well uh, and and it's it's spyware on your on your device they they want to they want to tailor made ads sent to you 
So right. they'll, they'll, they're willing to spend a bit of money to tailor adware to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's the holy grail of advertising, right? It's targeted, targeted, targeted advertising. Yeah, yeah. She failed terribly at that. And surprisingly, she came from Google, <laughs> didn't she? came from Google. She was a failed manager at Google. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, man. Just, uh, they just, uh, okay, we, we got this toxic little beast working for us. Let's just send her the Yahoo and destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Google. Good job. That was, like, perfect. <laughs> that worked out perfect, didn't it? They like. Uh, I bet you somebody over there at Google is just laughing right now. He just can't <laughs> stop laughing because he knows what he did. <laughs> I bet you it's it's Sergey. He's pretty smart. He's probably like, yeah, totally. Every time he goes into a room private, he just busts out laughing and says, Alyssa Myers killed it. <laughs> Our only competition. <laughs> <laughs> Go feminism. Girl power. Girl yeah. Power. <laughs> yeah, she, oh yeah, she was doing the whole. I'm so strong, independent. I'm pregnant, and uh, you know, all the girls were like, "Ooh!" They bought into it a little bit. It generated uh, uh, a little bit of uh, an upswing in their in their uh, in their marketing abilities, but eventually that that all goes away. <laughs> yeah, and then what's the other, so then there's uh, Sandberg, right? She at Facebook. She oh was, yeah. Oh man! What was her name? They brought her in, and uh, that uh, thing all went. Oh God! I, my buddy put a lot of his money into Facebook, and he was just like freaking during that whole thing. Now. Oh really? The yeah. uh... <laughs> how they were gonna? Yeah, my big question was that when you first bought into Facebook, is how are you gonna start selling ads on Facebook? Right, right. How, how are you gonna start selling real products? Because you got to do that. You got to know. You got to start selling stuff. Yeah, and they thought that they, the they were gonna cram a bajillion ads into these little streams that people watch, and it's that was never. I, it's just uh, you can't with a market cap of three hundred billion dollars or whatever it is. I mean, I, I don't see how you could get enough ads through that little that little space. Yeah, and you didn't have uh, the, the 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 eBay thing going on that you have now. They they fixed it, and uh, you got you know, people selling actual hard products on there, which is generating money for generating their ads and paying for their ads, and then uh, you know it, it generates uh, you know the currency that comes out of that. Uh, but they, right. they it was a little late, wasn't it? They were and the, they didn't get it at first. What they really had to do. Yeah, they they, uh, they didn't monetize for a long time. They put it off, right? Yeah. Um, but who was that lit woman that was over there? And she, uh, they had to, they they laid her off, and then uh, what's his name came back and uh, said, "Okay, I'll do it now again." <laughs> Wait for which one? Uh, Facebook. She left and then came back. No, the the original owner came back to manage it. Oh, I forget how that how that actually worked oh. out. And now he he put somebody in place now that's actually managing the whole thing. Right. Mm. You mean when Sergey and Larry left and then came back? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. sold and then they they left and came back and it's like okay, we're back now. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was sort of almost an apology there. I I remember reading those like yeah, we kind of screwed that one, screwed the pooch on that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Having the founders in there is generally a good thing. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Lilith the Dragon said that women can make thousands of dollars on a webcam show, live gaming, streaming, don donations from major fucking simps. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a sex sells. Uh, uh, you know, that's a that's a you know, porn is always a market that they got. You know. Uh, yeah. That's the internet. That's you know what three quarters of the internet is just freaking porn. <laughs> <laughs> it is, man. It is, and it is absolutely a free source of income that all most all women have accessible at any time, right? So you know any woman if she needs money or wants you know wants to just do it, she could just go and do some porn chat rooms or whatever you know um, live live webcams. Um, men can't do that shit. No fucking way, dude. No, no. We even see that around here. Uh, we can look at some of the woman producers, and they're averaging fifty, sixty thousand viewers. You know, just for being, you know, pretty or uh, 
uh, you know, stimulating to look at. I don't know what it is, but uh, and some of the men are struggling, like TFM struggling at eighteen thousand and doing right. twice the job. You know, and it's like, oh yeah, you know, you just have a pretty. Uh, but we're gonna we will see in MGTOW that uh, that one woman that comes around and starts pushing MGTOW soon. What do we do about that when it happens? Start pushing it in what sense? Like trying to pretend she's MGTOW or yeah, pretend? it's like a, a MGTOW supporter, and she gets and then all the guys will start going over there. It's like uh, she's mm. you know we had the Karen that did that, but uh, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. That, that's a great uh, thing to watch out for and be be wary of is. Uh, and like Diana Davidson kind of had a lot of um, yeah, Diana's got a oh forty two thousand now. Uh, is it that uh, many? Yeah, she's up there. Well, maybe not as much as forty two. It's like twenty ish, I think. Last time 20 -ish, I was twenty ish, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But she's been growing steadily, and it's just the, the female presence, you know. Um, uh, yeah. That the men are find that female. Know, yeah. It's female in group bias and male out group bias. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Everybody be, loves women. Now, uh, the, the one porn star started coming around. I figured, oh, she, she takes off her top, then uh, the MGTOW's done. It's over, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. So if we got like a, a female, like a porn star who is MGTOW, or at least talking about MGTOW, that would be, yeah, I, I imagine that, especially if you had like a sexy, you know, like a sexy kind of chick who was like talking all about MGTOW. Yeah, but didn't that like MGTOW United? That guy, he was obsessed with that Stacy chick and all that. Yeah, kind of went down that that route. They were getting obsessed with like the female MGTOW. Oh yeah, what was that girl's name? Uh, she was a little chubby little blonde girl. Uh, there was Stacy, and then there was uh, they called yeah. her the mother of MGTOW. It made me. It almost made me. I puked a little in the back of my throat. <laughs> Uh, what was her? Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Shining would know her name, but she was, said she was uh, some psychologist, and she brought in the MU group, uh, not the MU, the uh, uh, what is that? A mental health group. Right. Yeah. Oh God. Are you talking about Lisa Emerald? Lisa there Emerald. You go. Yeah, that's her name. And then she she just left. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been no market here, huh? I was gonna say, the uh, the money wasn't strong enough. The money wasn't. But what happens when the money does get strong enough? We we become a, an obs we will become an obsession. Does, you know how they act? It's like uh, resources are there. They want the resources. They will influx. And then we're gonna get these guys that we've seen it already that'll say, oh, she can be a big town mom or whatever she is. That's okay if women come in. But they don't know what they're giving away. They're giving away the resources that could have promoted maybe. One or two guys around here may have uh, may have yeah. been able to make a living on this, and you know, start yeah. competing in the media and start having a real product to put out. Uh, that's what yeah. they're, they're giving up. I mean, when I, you know, look, women, look at what they do, right? Women are totally support each other. They buy each other's products. They they read each other's stupid ass blogs just yeah. because they're women to support them. To give them money, so for us to do something like that, it's not like it's not like we would necessarily want to because men are kind of like not that petty, but because you know they're doing it, we might as well, you know, because fuck it, you know, level the playing field a little bit, you know. Yeah, yeah, that was my big argument with it because they didn't see it was. Uh, I, I don't think they seen that it was. Uh, it was just. It was being. Uh, it was mirroring the blue pill society. What was happening there? Bring the girl in, and then all of a sudden she's there. She's the representative, and everybody's looking at her, and they say, "No, that's okay." And I was saying, "No, that's not okay," because it, it derails MGTOW before it even starts. Yeah, totally. It's it's a weakness. It's it's just more more weakness to women. Um, it's just like you know, if you think back of. I just like to think in terms of, say, like some empire or some, uh, you know, whatever. You know, it's like giving the keys to the uh, to the barbarians, right? It's like yeah. once, you know. <laughs> yeah. How would, once you. Yeah. How would we are, are we supposed to uh, develop these systems 
that uh, like the mayor make tow system there to uh, to house males, start feeding males, uh, start uplifting males where they get back into being productive males, and uh, do these things. If all the money's there's never going to be any here. Right. Right. It's um. It's too easy. We see how easy it is for females to co-opt things. So there should be a very strong apprehension, yes, and um, suspicion, and just a resistance yeah. toward that. Resistance too. Yeah, that was kind of the founding of uh, the MGTOW monks. We seen that. We said, no, we can't have women in these spaces because if we know what they're going to do, and if we're going to ever start these systems, that we we can't have it. And then we got this resistance from this other group that was, you know, a mortal. And we, I had my arguments with him, and uh, the arguments really wasn't about what he was or anything. The arguments were about what they were doing that emulated the blue pill world and was going to turn right. out horrible for us. And they didn't understand it. And they said, no, we having the women in, and we still get it with Nico. Oh, we can't dehumanize. When they say we can't dehumanize half the race, that's just so offensive to me. Right. It's like that's not even a question. The question was, what about MGTOW? Right. It's more of a positive than a negative. It's not a negative against women. It's a positive f for, for MGTOW. Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, what about MGTOW? You, you're losing it here, and it's just going to be sucked into the matrix, and then the, and MGTOW is just going to be some uh, some uh, cool fashion statement that you can get yourself a shirt with uh, the MGTOW emblem and parade around and say you're a strong, independent man. You just become feminism. <laughs> yeah. Taking that hard stance is difficult. It's uh, difficult. It is difficult, yeah. you know, and and it's 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 even challenging from a moral perspective. I mean, I get th there is an argument, you know, bigotry is bigotry and all that, and um, and it's always we got to keep that, you know, in the back of our minds, not to be like racist or something against women, but it is to be affirmative in toward males, you know, because it, it and really. I think it's more about um, it's not so much. It's like males are not. We're naturally very equalitarian. We're naturally yeah. accepting, and we don't, you know, males don't really want to um, exclude anyone. Really, you know, it's like everyone just do your thing, and and we and, and that is what it is. But the problem is, is that females are aggressive in their misandry, right. and so because of that, it warrants males putting up a resistance to that and so to the extent that that um, you know we, you, we promote a more male space and not really female it's actually warranted by you know by the behavior of women themselves they're the ones who make it necessary put it that way you know yeah yeah so it's a we, we can get these we can get these views of uh, you know feminism start eating itself but uh, we don't consider this in MGTOW sometimes, uh, uh, what we're doing here, uh, where we're at, uh, why we want to do this, and, and uh, we know it's going to happen if we let it go, but yeah, we get the resistance from the other people that don't know. What, who? I, that was always something that just, uh, it, was, right. it was almost blinding to me when I seen it. It's like, wait, 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 we're not like everybody else. Uh, there, we're still building this thing. Uh, we don't have to. We don't have to argue these. Uh, uh, when they brought in, like I said, when they brought, Ibmore brought was brought in, it was just it, they just reminded us that there was racism out there, and we should include ourselves with that because there was no racism in here. Right. And now right. we got the uh, the Islamic phobia thing going on in here, and then we have the racism thing going on in here. We're starting to re we're starting to mirror and reflect regular society, and these things shouldn't be happening in here. Uh, Agree. Pretty, pretty soon, the gynocentrism and uh, will, you know, creep in if we don't be ever guardful against it. And we should be ever guardful against a lot of these stupid things we see. This arguing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like to think of um, it all comes. All of that stuff that you know, the the isms, all of the isms to me, really just come back to gynocentrism. Yeah. 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 Whether it's, <laughs> yeah, we, we said it, 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 all roads lead to MGTOW, and all those roads, <laughs> all those isms lead back to gynocentrism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
it's women that divide men, you know, women divide men against each other, and um, and so all that stuff is it's ultimately petty and trivial and should not be embraced. Um, yeah, don't even, yeah, uh, when, we, uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about it, it's like this uh, German thing with the German rape squads. Mm -hmm. uh, it was sent out there in such a way, and then all of a sudden we picked it up here, and then we started doing videos about it, and I was like, no, 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 don't do a video about that because you, you're supporting it in some bad, in some, some minuscule way. It may be interesting to you, but don't support those kind of things. Cause yeah, cause it just breeds that mentality. It breeds that mentality that 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 there is really such things as this Muslim rape culture and everything, and uh, uh, it it was just horrible. It's just horrible for a MGTOW when we do them things, and it's groupthink. Uh, it, it becomes right. a trend. Uh, the pooning feminist. That's why the MRM or the MRA, in a sense has become so ineffective because they think that all their job is to do is poon feminists. <laughs> and they, it, it, Paul, right. Paul recently says, he, he said on a recent video that oh, they, some, some guys say our job is to do this, and he says, no, we're not, that is our job, just to, just to point out feminism. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're just buying into the whole trap. Yeah, yeah, that is very interesting. He said that outright? Mm-hmm. That's our whole. That's that's the extent of our of our job is to point out uh, feminism, right? Yeah, that's the extent of their job. Some uh, that's that's a sound chamber, isn't it? Uh, an echo room. Uh, that's uh, working well, within a vacuum. <laughs> yeah, it, it reminds me of um, Charlie Brown cartoon with Lucy and the football. You know, it's uh, they can they can throw shit out. They're gonna they can say you know whatever crazy shit they want. And uh, if if your job is to constantly, you know, clean up the shit, that's a never-ending job that goes nowhere, right? Yeah, it's, it's just like missing. She pulls the football every time, you know, over yeah. and over again. Every <laughs> single time, that's going to happen, and that's what's going to happen around here. You guys says, "What is traversable supposed to mean, anyways?" King David, uh, hmm. traversable is a, a wormhole. Uh, when you're looking into the wormhole. Uh, we don't know what's on the other side, and we don't know what's on the other side of MGTOW either. Uh, this is all brand new to us. Uh, we're traversing the wormhole. We're traversing from one mountain to the next mountain. We don't know what's on the other side, uh, but we will get there, and we'll be able to send back images or send back whatever we need to say, hey, this is what's over here. We're going. We're going. We're going our own way. We're going somewhere. Where are we going? We're going into this unbelievable area uh, where men do not know what's on the other side, and but we're gonna we're gonna get there and we're gonna gather there and we're gonna make what we need to make there. That's what I say is uh, we're gonna develop our own systems, but we don't know it's there. And uh, the best way I can say that is traversable. It's through a wormhole. Do you know what's on the other side? I don't, but we will know. My God, Jim, like where are we? <laughs> yeah, my God, Jim. Uh, we yeah, where are we? We we uh, uh, yeah. It's uh, this is all brand new to us. Uh, I didn't wake up as a child one day and uh, and when the school school teacher asked me, Joe, what are you gonna be when you grow up? I said, Well, I'm gonna be a MGTOW producer. <laughs> no, I said what everybody else says. I'm gonna be an astronaut. I'm gonna be a policeman. I'm gonna be a fireman. Uh, I was going to be a, a steel worker. I was going to be, you know, make. I was going to be a, a, a car driver and, and win races and play football. I didn't. I never could imagine this thing when I was young. Yeah, I like. I think your description, or the traversable thing, is neat. I have now that I really understand what's behind it. It's because I think there's it's, it's a lot of truth to it because you know, as we talked about earlier. There's a lot of history for mankind, a lot of civilizations to look at and draw from and, and kind of, you know, learn from. And I think it's an, it's an open question as to whether MGTOW can be something that is, that is really new and different or if it falls back into the old. And so to the extent that we can traverse into something new, I think that's a neat idea. Yeah, neat idea. yeah we're going somewhere with no men have ever no men in the history of the world has ever asked these questions we ask we weren't allowed to it was, it was a social taboo uh, yeah 
I mean, well, we're you... breaking, we're breaking, uh, you know, grounds, ba racial genderism, you know, we're breaking ground into that. Uh, because traditionalism has been the rule. Traditional has been the rule, yeah. Uh, and it, they still want it to be the rule. They're fighting like uh, they're fighting like the southern slave owners to keep a hold of that, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, yeah. The China thing to come out just directly and say we we we, we need to uh, instill reinforce because you know it's fading. We need to reinforce masculinity. And we define masculinity as males providing and protecting for females. I mean, that's that's it. They're telling you right out in the open, you know. Um, yeah, never never a good deal. Never a good deal. Yeah, we're the protectors, providers. Yeah, uh, I, I I reject that. I don't. I'm not the protector and provider of all that anymore. You know what I am? I'm the I'm the protector and provider of myself. Uh, trying yeah. to find a, a new uh, a new way to do this thing. Huh? Hey. Yeah, um, I mean, the only the only scenario in which males could have some logical incentive to, to, to do anything that would be helpful to others is where their property is um, protected, their property rights. So what they produce, they get to keep. Yeah. You know, like if you if 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 um if marriage were not, you know, right now marriage is just a confiscation of male wealth, right? That's all it is. But if it were different, if it were like, uh, you know, sh there's no way she can steal your shit. There's no, uh, there's no way the state can steal your shit. They can't steal your kids. They can't take your stuff. I'm not saying I would encourage it by <laughs> any means, but at least it would sort of be a more logical, rational, reasonable thing to, if, if it was something that you wanted to do, you know, it would make a little more sense. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, death will uh, will take away everything we we own. Uh, I just had seen a uh, it's a uh, a male in the area was having some uh, financial difficulties. So me and a friend went out the other day uh, to try to see what was going on in the male's life. He was a seventy year old male, and uh, he was still simping. And uh, through his whole life, he had worked, and he was a uh, he was the protector. He was the provider. He was a uh, he, he had this idea in, ingrained in his head that he needed this female company and everything, but he was 70 years old still. And what he was doing was he was bringing these horrible, horrible women in his life that ex they did what they do. They extracted everything from him, and his gas is getting ready to be turned off. And uh, I just, I just kind of stepped back, and I was like, wow, there it is, the 70-year-old uh, the simp still simping still giving away everything he owned and he's gonna leave this world with nothing and uh, he's, he's spending his uh, his children's inheritance on uh, you know having fun parties with women and uh, these were, were these were deplorable women they were crackheads and they were uh, uh, whores and tramps and everything and but there it was right in front of me uh, he had never learned in his life how to be comfortable in his own skin how to, how to you know just come home you know, go out into his garage, do something, uh, watch TV, and be comfortable with himself. He couldn't sit there for five minutes with himself, and that's what these manginas and these simps and these white knights are—they're they're, gonna—they're gonna be that guy when they get old. They're, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 well put. Yeah, men, you know, from the time you're zero, you basically run—you're thrown into the hamster wheel of performing for females and your whole identity is wrapped up in it so you, you 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 sitting with yourself doesn't even make any sense because you're just this automaton that's out yeah. there running in circles and running on the treadmill and uh, you know it's not not until you stop and say you know who am I really what yeah. am I really what am I really am I valuable and then you start placing value on yourself you're if you start doing this at 20 30 by the time you're you're 40, 50, my age, you're gonna have a real sense of uh, agency, a real sense of independence, uh, where you don't need all this stuff. You're not spending money on stupid garbage, and you're starting to collect some uh, some wealth and some respect and some uh, uh, you know whatever you wanted to be in life, whatever whatever you aspire to. But uh, 
you know, you, yeah. this whole thing is designed to extract from you, and it's designed to extract everything. How many men have you looked at? I've seen this so many times in the last few years. The one incident I can remember before that is, uh, you could tell I do some social work here, um, and I don't want to give away what I do and everything, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, we went out to another male's house. He had gotten thrown in a tub, and the girl wrapped him up inside of a shower curtain and duct taped him inside of the shower to took his wallet and his keys and left. This was a 70 year old, 68 year old male. And uh, anyway, well, what was she doing in the house? And she, and he says, well, I'm her sugar daddy. Mm. He was, he was paying for it. And uh, he was getting abused and he was simping and it was disgusting. It looked disgusting to me when I seen it. I was like, dude, really at your age, grow up. Yeah, but that's it's hard to see that. It's hard you know? to see that. Yeah, it's man. It's just like but, I see so many of these cases in in society where men are just vying for that that last ounce of validation that can draw. Yeah, the female validation they can get. So you know, I stuck it to her at night. That's all you can say. We'll put all that in one hand and put a dollar bill in the other. See which one weighs more. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See which There's one's something wrong more. with the crew. My crew, the crew of the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> They've been taken over by Orion slave women. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, they're, they're just selling out. They've never learned how these men have never learned how to be themselves. Be and that's it's just it's just uh, as men. To me, it just brings me back to the idea that it's like the thing about maleness. It's fickle. It's tricky because the if you just go off of our biological programming females will win right females yeah. will dominate males if you just have our biological programming because that's what's in our base nature you know we'll be gynocentric males will compete for females females will run the show except for the alpha will kind of be the um he'll be the puppet uh, in charge yeah. but um but this so the behavior you're talking about to to you know um that's our base reality and that's the, that's the thing about masculinity is it's like we have to realize that we're sort of born flawed <laughs> as males because we have that we have that addiction that's inborn and our um our struggle in life is to overcome that that's like our mission is to overcome that and masculinity sort of facilitates proper masculinity facilitates that you know um but yeah, because yeah, I mean, just to see that it, it tells you that it's so instinctive and it's it's very much inside of us. Yeah, we're always gonna be fighting it. Spock, are they really that beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was the what were the girls in that? Uh, the the green ones that. Uh, yeah, you know, Orion oh. slave girls are the green women. Yeah, they show uh, Kirk. He does that great scene where he's he's he's, he's sitting on the bed, putting his shoes on, indicating that he just uh, just got a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they produce a pheromone that pretty much puts you in a state where you can't control yourself. Uh, so Kirk got a uh, Kirk got parasitically uh, 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 infected. Well, that's what it is, guys. Really. Uh, oh, you mean like you mean with the ear thing that went in his brain? Is that you're talking about? Well, that's a, another episode. But the episode Joe was talking about is the Orion slave traders. Okay. The Orion slave so traders. Green girls. Yeah. <laughs> the Orion <laughs> men are, are hideous, and the Orion slave women are extraordinary gorgeous. Mm. Yeah, and was... have pheromones that can control men. Well, there you go. They nailed it. Star they Trek. It. Yeah, cool. they, yeah. There's a. I, I never found the. I never found him attractive. That was a whole kind of big lie about it. When I was, I remember watching it when I was a kid and going. They're like they they started playing the light music in the background and uh, they're going ooh look and I was like look at what. <laughs> You didn't. Yeah. You weren't attracted, huh? Yeah. No, it didn't work on me. But it, but you know, if you're watching the show, you're like, oh, you know, if you're a fanboy of that, uh, you're you buy into that stuff. You know, that that's that's what was attractive. I don't know if that was attractive or not. I didn't yeah, I, I 
I have a. Uh, it's interesting to kind of. Again, this is why kind of self introspection is an ongoing thing. But when I try and figure out like to what degree my attraction to females is innate and what part of it is socialized. It's tricky to tell where, where that line begins and ends. Um, I mean, I, I'm i very attracted to women. Like, like way, like a lot of women are extremely sexually attracted to me. But, and when you say, you know, you didn't find those women attractive, it's like, it makes me wonder if my attraction is largely socialized or, or how much of it is just like, you know, straight up uh, nature, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's funny. Well, they know all the tricks, you know, uh, high heel shoes, the arched back, uh, yep. pushing the buttocks up into a forward position, which resembles the Lordis position. And we all yeah. know what the, the Lordis position is. The Lordis position was to signalize uh, uh, she's ready to have sex. Uh, she's ready. She's receptive. Uh, we know that from the bonobos and the and the uh, chimpanzees. The 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 female lowers her back and puts up her butt and gives the lordis uh, position and that tells the yep. male that she's subservient to him. Uh, yep. you know, that, that's high heels in general. That's why they exactly. do that. And, uh, exactly. It's funny that uh, most uh, women, uh, if a female during her young ages of uh, uh, to, to 12 to 14, maybe 15 up to 16 years old, uh, if she wears high heels and her, and, her, and her body contorts to that position too many times, it will stay in that position. And you see that with a, uh, but they're sexualizing that position. We look at that with the, uh, what's the, uh, what's the big, uh, the Kardashian girl with that butt. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, her, her, yeah, her butt is just in the Lord's position permanently. Permanently. And uh, that's what males, uh, males find a trap. Oh, it, it sets off a mechanism inside of you that says, oh, oh, she's ready to, uh, you know, engage. It's a very, very powerful trigger. It's, it's a very powerful trigger, right? Uh, that's what I told my uh, my son when I was trying to teach him about when he was eighteen, nineteen. We we I, I took him to the bar and I was like, "Now look around here. Uh, we we're doing a PUA thing for him because I taught a little PUA." When I says, "Which ones are ready? Which ones don't you want to go around? And which ones are just bitches? Or which ones in it?" And I said, "The the best way to tell is just look at the hump, and she's going to tell on herself." The ones that are in the Lordest position, mm -hmm. are them are ready to go, yeah. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that uh, you know you can start doing which ones dress like this and do the whole PUA thing, but that for me was, uh, you know, uh, yeah, they display that quite readily when they walk up to you, and uh, all of a sudden you kind of glance down and go, oh, yep, I see it. It's it's massive fraud that they're perpetrating against men. <laughs> <laughs> You know, walking around as if as if they're in receptivity mode, like twenty four seven, when they're not. You know, seven, yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. Now they figured out with the high heels, and uh, they they'll blame it on men and say men discovered high. No, I don't think so. I, I think, uh, you know. Uh, oh, it's a lie. It's such a lie. Women could stop wearing heels anytime they want. Anytime they want. Yeah. They wear it because they profit. They profit from the attention. Yeah. You know, guys, that they sell. Products designed to for women to be in that state. So Kardashian, they have like the waist trainer. Yeah. The Kardashian waist trainer. And she also started another unhealthy health fad of no shampoo. Oh, for the pheromones. So, yeah, and to, to uh make the hair help, shiny and shit. Make the hair have uh, shiny with the natural oils, but. That's not really health-wise good for everyone. Oh yeah, now we've seen a, a what I think is horrifying is uh, I look at some of these women and they're they have that neonatus rounded faces, the puffy skin, the, uh, the it's holding water and everything. And what a lot of women have figured out is if they get a flu or a sickness, uh, their skin gets pale, which is more attractive. So they try to get sick. <laughs> They have that neonatus look. Hmm. I mean, and, how low can you go, you know? Yeah, and you're just running around as a bacteria farm, spreading that around, and uh, they were trying. It was a big fad at a point, and uh, women had figured out that, oh, no, if I just got a, a, a slight cold, my skin, you know you know when you have a cold, your skin mm -hmm. gets paler, it, mm -hmm. it clear, your, your face clears up, your body's pumping out things to... Uh, 
uh, you, you get a, a, a more roundish holding water look to your face and everything and figure women figured that out it's just oh if I just keep myself sick I'll, uh, I'll be more attractive <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's there's all the examples, you know, the the foot binding or the small feet, just yeah. and like um, bustiers. You brought up uh, Nimoy, what you were talking about earlier. It's it's similar to the bustier, right? Um, all these things were very finely crafted and refined to trigger those those male sexual impulses. Um, to you know, to because the male recognizes the patterns of of fertility and receptivity, and so they just uh, they put the, the red lipstick on as if you know they're extra fertile and you know they're they're receptive, and then the male boom you know it just triggers that response. Yeah. Now when we look at the other end of the spectrum, uh, the female in her natural space state is uh, females are cryptic. Uh, they're supposed to be cryptic. It, it's designed, and we see this in our in our bonobo society now that we're having with the it's it's communal. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The human female is supposed to naturally be cryptic to, uh, so males cannot see when they're uh, when they're ovulating. Uh, Absolutely, this is an important concept here, and and I just there's another way. It's the uh, concealed fertility is another way of thinking of yes. it. And, but yeah, absolutely. It's it's so powerful. Now that's in a communal sense for all the men think that they're the father, and we see this with judges, lawyers. They think that they're the father. We have this parental, uh, this parental society that parents females, and that's why we have things all screwed up. Because uh, it, it, people ask, why did the judges rule on behalf of? What? Well, it's a parental society. It's parentage. It's uh, it comes from that cryptic state where uh, over a million years here. Uh, all the males in society think that they are the daddy, and you hear it in our in our culture. I'm your daddy culture, uh, and right. the the government has become the daddy. The and he, what what they're really saying is he is the male that thinks it's it's a big generation of the uh, of the delusion that they put out there. Delusion yes. of uh, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a child. Yes, and all the men buy into that uh, because they think they're the next uh, he man. I'm the daddy. You call me daddy. Uh, that's right. what sugar daddy. That I used that before. He thought he was the sugar daddy. That's what he desired. That's what he wanted to be, the daddy. And that's a perfect example of how they use <laughs> um, male dominance to their advantage, right? right? To their so advantage. They, they push you to be dominant, and then so now you want to be the daddy so that you can be dominant. But then they only do that because they're going to come back around and right. parasite off, parasite off of your parasite. daddy. Yeah. Now you take that along with the other end of the spectrum that we just talked about with the hair, the makeup, the neoteny, the the lordess mm -hmm. position, the all that. Man, that is a, that's a double attack on the male census. It's a triple attack on the male census. So heavy. It's so heavy. But here in MGTOW, we've identified these things. That's why, listen up. Uh, these guys have to listen up to what we're saying because we're not telling anybody any lies here. Uh, once you identify these things, it makes it easier for you to navigate through this world and not get affected by that stuff and be the monk and be in total, total. MGTOW is about being in total control of your senses so you, yes. as a male, can be more successful. Totally, I totally agree. It's that, it, it's like I said. I mean, it's we're born the way we're we're so men are actually really vulnerable the way they're born because of all these mechanisms, you know. Yeah. Like if you imagine, basically put it like this, uh, traversable. If you imagine coming into the world and not having any kind of ma anyone teaching you this stuff or any kind of masculine culture or um, understanding in order to to the way you could learn this stuff, you would you would be susceptible to all these things. You would basically be you're a female psychophant. Yeah, you're. That's what they got. That's why we we when we look at when I looked at those two males, I, all I seen from my from what these eyes see now, uh, mm. I seen simp. I seen mangina, a whole life's worth of work, just lost. Uh, yeah. I don't want to see that. I don't want to look at these guys that come here and say. Say, man, he just got his utility extracted, and he knew better. He should have known better. How did I fail? 
and explaining what I needed to explain. Right. It's it's such it may, it's a it's a night and day difference between you know the knowledge and 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 not having the knowledge, and that's why, you know, under the undertone. If you notice the undertone of feminism and just females in general. Yeah. It's really anti knowledge. It's really anti anti knowledge, right. They want to keep you stupid because that's when they have the, the upper hand. They have the upper hand when men are sort of ignorant and just, you know, fumbling around in their you know, the unfortunate flaws that they were born with, you know, female addiction and validation seeking and all this, um, all these triggers, you know, that's when they profit immensely. So they that's where they really don't, you know, they're not um in favor of male enlightenment, you know. Right. Yeah. Now we can get to the the younger guys, and I know it's frustrating for me. Uh, and we often get called, to call the uh, the monks and the old guys and everything. But uh, hey, uh, I'm just trying to you know spread you know, a little wisdom here. If I can get to a guy at 16, 17 years old. Yeah. What a and, huge difference. It, what a huge difference in his life, and all he's got to do is take on a few. You know, know about neoteny, know about the Lord's position, know about cryptus, know about uh, uh, hypergamy, know about uh, all those things, uh, those traps that you have fallen, and his life will be fine. But yeah, when they come around and they reject right. me, and they reject what I say, all I'm seeing is, oh, you're going to be, a f you're just going to be. Uh, all I can see is the failure coming. You're, boy, that hurts. That that uh, you know, that hurts. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a huge service you're doing to them to 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 you know go one direction versus the other. I mean, what, yeah, men can be really prosperous, really. Um, they can live a good life without all these, um, you know, whatever you want to call them, these defects or whatever, you know. Um, so yeah, 17 years old. So if I think back, if I could have, you know, how I could have ran my life knowing these things, it would be, I'd be fucking balling. Oh Ball. yeah, yeah. You could do the PUA <laughs> at young. I'm not gonna say that all the young guys can't can't do the PUA, PUA, but the PUAs don't explain it to them correctly. Uh, they're not gonna tell them about this stuff, and uh, it's all some uh, you know uh, big you know dress like Michael Jackson and learn how to dance, and uh, you're you're gonna do good. No, there's much much more to it. Uh, they they they're short sighting these guys. And they're uh, they're they they're still gonna fall for the trap. Uh, the Tholian web. They're caught in the Tholian web. Yeah. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> it's the web. <laughs> the web of deception and deceit and manipulation and lies and sex, drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> drugs and rock and roll. Yeah, I still like drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> 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 we get we get a little, little bit of room, a little bit of room, a little bit of room for that, you know. <laughs> uh, since they're being more tolerant of marijuana these days, I've I've tried to you know adjust my uh, my opinion about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the drug, you know, um, marijuana marijuana is not a big deal. I mean, it's it's we it's it's an artifact that it's even a big deal is made out of it, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a, uh, it's sort of silly, and uh, rock and roll is always good. It <laughs> makes me feel manly. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, you know, I hate to not to sidetrack us or anything, but you know, the whole the the anti drug thing is very anti male. You know, I mean, like when I think that one uh, percent of our population is in prison because it's essentially drugs. Yeah. This is so so anti-male, you know. Oh, that's that's just part of the the new prison system too that I see as the you know uh, uh, the daddy daddy farming, you know. Uh, it's just part of that daddy farming prison where they can put any male in prison anytime they want if he uh, refuses to uh, give up his utility or his wealth. Uh, that's right. Uh, yeah, you got a. Uh, Maybe uh, Lilith here says, what if males used emotions and intelligence kind of the way women do, and we were able to kind of turn it back on them? What about that? Emotions, what if males use emotions? Let me, ooh, it's going too fast. Uh, <laughs> so what if males are to use emotion and intelligence together and become immortals to, uh, 
to women and then they serve they us. Well, yeah. Uh, putting women in a subservient, uh, uh, in their sub uh, sub I don't really believe in putting women in a subservient position. Uh, I, I really have no feelings at all for women, uh, whether they be subservient right. or not. I, all I want from a woman is to do what her task is in life, if, whether it be uh, making a sandwich at the subway shop or uh, if she you know that sort of stuff. If they're gonna come in here, act decent, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't think you're gonna because well, I agree with that. Is, yeah, go ahead. The problem is all those other things that they bring to the table that are the negatives are gonna come with the positive. Right, right. Um, I'm not yeah. excluding the positive. I'm. I, I would say always. You know. I'm not excluding the positives that they have and they bring to the table. I'm excluding all the negatives. I don't totally. hate I don't hate all women. I hate bad women. And yeah. Just And most women are bad women. <laughs> most women are just in this society, yeah, most women are just they they're, they're bad women. They, there's hypergamy and uh all that stuff and I can't get it out of them and uh searching for that Noel at some point became a uh, it became too hard and too many failures on that. And uh, it's impractical. I, yeah, it's impractical. Every time I fail, I, I don't. I fail myself, and I fail. Uh, I, I I fail a little more in life. Uh, I think. I mean, we just got to come to grips with the fact that women are not monogamous. No, they're not. Right, their nature is it's to totally. Yeah. <laughs> Their their mission is essentially to to go out there and seek alpha genetic material, acquire it, not necessarily stay with them, right? Even that, that's kind of the the misconception that I think a lot of men think if I could just be alpha, then women would stay with me. That's not even true. What women want is serial alphas, like you know, multiple different alphas. Multiple, yeah. And um, they want a there's, community to support them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so there's no. Um, there's no way to be that. There's no. There, you're aspiring to something that doesn't exist. It's a non-existent yeah. thing. Yeah, and it took me a while to get over that. And I, I actually had a female explain uh, to me, and she had to explain to me. Uh, uh, she was a very notable feminist in my youth. Uh, I, after I had got my divorce, I started running around with uh, feminists to uh, try to learn about it, and then essentially started dating one. Uh, but uh, you know, she explained that hey, Joe, there's no such thing as monogamy. You do know that, dude, don't you? And then my mind, my little mind, was like, no, no, that's what has always been told to me—the big lie that uh, you're supposed to find a girl and you're, you're going to be monogamous. No, everything in science tells us, and, and everything you're going to learn in life will eventually tell you that there is no such thing as monogamy. And uh, exactly, if you just look out at the real world, you you know that it's obvious. It becomes it becomes readily apparent, but I mean it is the that does make it difficult to know what then then what do you do you know what what what's since that's the case you know when you throw out that myth that whole thing yeah. it's like how do you then you know on in what terms do you even engage with females and and I don't know what the answer is but essentially it's minimal, it's minimal. <laughs> like as little yeah, as possible always, that's yeah that's always the answer it's MGTOW minimal you know. Uh, uh, that's the only way to be totally 100% safe. Every time you move a little bit on that bar forward to engaging in that, uh, with that, you, you're putting yourself the risk factor. There should be two bars. One is the bar you're moving forward, engaging in uh, in that blue pill behavior, and one is the risk factor that always moves forward with it. And the right. higher you move forward, the more that risk goes up. You know, uh, when when they will meet or when they will spark together. <laughs> It's electric, uh, you know. It could happen right. at any moment. Uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, we can't judge. We can't uh, measure that. It's not measurable when that's going to happen, but it will happen. You can't predict it. You can, yeah, exactly. Um, it's very. It's a good point you make because it, it, once you engage with it, it's just that little by little you go further and further down that slope. You know. Yeah. It's almost like. You kind of got to take a hard stance against it, otherwise, you're inevitably going to go that direction. Right. 
Right. Um, better to start at the safe end of the bar, you know, uh, uh, than the other end of the bar where you're just uh, taking in all that risk and then learning. And, uh, you know, that's the monk way. Uh, better to start at the safe. Uh, whatever, wherever you take your life, wherever these guys take their lives, it's just as long as they know the the basic premises of how things work, I think they'll be fine. Uh, but right. Like I say, there's these guys that are railing it against, uh, you know, the monk's code. You know, they're railing against it right now. Uh, they don't, you know, uh, we got the guys, yo, it's okay to touch. It's okay to go do this. It's okay to have the women around. No. Put that out of your mind for a little bit and uh, learn what you need to learn. Uh, no, one, no, one ever t no one taught these guys uh, this in high school. It's not a course you're going to get in high school. Uh, it's not even a course that sometimes is a... Uh, God, it's a, it's so hard to articulate it, isn't it? Damn it, Jim! Don't fall into some type of man trap. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What was it? I used the to have Yeah, I used to have nightmares about that uh, that Star Trek episode where there were the holes, the the black holes, and they were trying to maneuver through this area, and there was these uh, these black holes, and then they fell into the black hole, and then they, I think it was. Uh, Spock ended up, and then there was a girl on the other side, and then uh, of course, and then uh, it was it, it's like oh, and then I'd have these nightmares where I was walking through this world, and then all of a sudden there was this black hole, and I just fell in it. <laughs> it's also Perfect analogy. The first episode of the original series where McCoy meets an old flame on a planet. Oh yeah. <laughs> Even they were dealing with gynocentrism on tr on Star Trek. Yeah, Star yeah. Trek was the original trying to explain it to us, and there was the original red pill, wasn't it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the black holes are a perfect example. I mean, if you think about it, a vagina is a black hole. Yeah. That's, that's what it is, <laughs> both figuratively and literally. It's, it's, it's an empty space that essentially serves to consume your attention, your resources, your lifeblood. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a black hole. It's a hole. It's the void of everything. <laughs> don't <laughs> fall into it. <laughs> don't get, don't, you, it's the, uh, the event horizon. Don't pass over the event horizon or it's, um, there's no turning back. You can't, you can't uh, get out of that. The tractor beam has got you. Yeah, they'll get you. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. That's a good. Um, that's a good analogy. Yeah. So, who's all in the room now? Uh, let's see. Let's. Uh, what what males use emotional? Okay, that was uh, the one before. I I haven't slid down the. Oh the. Okay. So. Uh, it's like six o'clock. We've been going like an hour, hour and a half. Uh. The uh, Super Bowl is coming on. Oh, yeah, Super, Super Bowl is 20 minutes. Yeah, Super Bowl is 20 minutes away, and I know a lot of the American public will probably want to jump out and do that, and I know I'm going to be getting friends here over, and they're going to be knocking on my door, you know, you know <laughs> with uh, dips and beer and shit pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, don't bring that dips and beer. <laughs> <laughs> stop, um, stop, stop, no. Yeah, yeah, and, and so it's, Tater chips? What did he call them? What did uh, Shiny call those? Uh, crisps. They Over call in them. England, they're crisps. Yeah, yeah. crisps. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, potato crisps. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was... We learn something new around here all the time, don't we? Uh, the different cultures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the... Um... Yeah, it, I guess you're right. It's just pretty much Americans who want to watch the Super Bowl, huh? It's not really Europeans. No, I think they'd probably get it over there, but it's like uh, 6, so it's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's 11 o'clock at night right now over there. So That's true. They don't give a fuck. 12, think though. about how much money is used to televise that and publicize that and how much money they get. Oh, God. How much is a uh, – you could probably look up real quick how much a commercial costs on uh, for Super Bowl Sunday you know, marketing to other Americans. It's just some phenomenal, and I do suppose it's, uh, tomorrow when everybody comes back, everybody's gonna go. I didn't watch it, but you're gonna come back and say, you know what, this gynocentric commercial I seen on the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> totally, 
<laughs> oh, you MGTOW are going to do that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It happens every year. We're going to go on for a week here. This next week is going to be talking about what gynocentric commercial uh, offended us the most. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be, as it should be. Someone's got to do that hard work. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna see. They didn't. I don't think they've been. Uh, last year they came out with them early and, and kind of. Uh, the uh, the whole mystique was gone when you watch the uh, Super Bowl this year. They they've been very tight lipped about those commercials. Well, oh which, yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking, man, they're just gonna gynocentric us up, up this year. I'm sure they'll probably like have a commercial where the Super Bowl is all women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're gonna they have all the girl football players out there, and she comes out and she's the quarterback, and she co- looks at the screen and goes, "I'm a strong, independent girl. I want to be the quarterback." And then the line <laughs> makes them up and says, "I'm part of the team." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I can just see it happening. You know, it's like, oh, my head will look you. Like in that new Vivo commercial where the the purple the head explodes and that's what's going to happen to me at some time tonight when I'm watching the <laughs> Super Bowl. My top of my head is just going to explode off and a purple dust is going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> just remember there. Uh, what we read this week, the uh, what it, the football commission they said that they have to interview females for the executive position oh, yeah. now. Yes, right? they do. That was uh, they. They have. There's two jobs inside of uh, inside of the NFL itself. The, the the actual business of the NFL, not the teams. The uh, the administrators that are now gynocentric positions. And I said before, uh, Jessica Valente was temporary filling one of those spots. Really. But now they got uh, two women, and I don't know. I can't remember their name. That are. Are feminist jobs inside the NFL, and that's what they do 24/7. It is so disgusting. I oh, can't stomach it. The lighter than air job, just sucking. <laughs> a, oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So I guess so. There's uh, some uh, King David's from Australia. It looks like he's going to be tuning in, or and then there's a Canadian. So I guess non-US folks do watch the Super Bowl. That's good. Um, what about you, Nimoy? Are you uh, are you gonna go watch the Super Bowl? Are you Spock? I'm not Spock. A uh, uh, green blooded hobgoblin. <laughs> I'm a doctor. <laughs> I'm a, he's a doctor. <laughs> Did I call you Spock? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Learned. Yeah. Well, the shiny's on. Okay. I don't watch sports. You don't watch sports. Uh, a lot of MGTOWs don't watch sports. Uh, is it the gynocentrism that bothers you? Um no, or the white knighting sort of thing, or the whole uh, alpha uh, or ableism. Ableism, okay. Ableism. You can't imagine yourself doing it. Not in this body. Not in this body. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, it's hard to imagine. You know, it's a hero worship a little bit to a, a point. Uh, yeah, for, for me, it's just. I mean, I I don't. I don't not like sports. Like all, I, I mean, I I respect and appreciate them, but oh, yeah. my sense is generally like, if I'm watching sports, I should probably be out playing them. But that's just kind of I feel like guilty. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I don't know. It's just uh, men doing what men do at their finest, you know. Uh, the, True. Yeah. The, the the beauty of the uh, you know when you watch a male an excellence NFL, an NFL player reach out. D- you know, diving through the air at 21 miles an hour, which is probably the fastest one of some of the fastest humans on this planet, 22, yeah. 23, 24 miles an hour, catching the ball with one hand, and then a big linebacker just smashing them and flipping them around three times in the air, and then he lands and holds onto the ball. That's quite a that's quite a male feat. You know, it's like damn. <laughs> Absolutely, you gotta stand then, in awe. Yeah, you just stand in awe. Men do beautiful things uh, sometimes. Uh, I always often give this story. Uh, even at my work, uh, I've seen men do just just hugely athletic, uh, just beautiful things that were uh, nobody else was going to see in the whole world, and everybody could appreciate. It. I was sitting up on a crane once. Uh, we had these little. Uh, you had to clean the crane rails, the, the electric rails. So they called in the you know the guys like me to do that the electricians and everything and we we put new blocks in as we go, 
uh, to keep the, the, the three phase from shorting. And uh, so you take it, you got your little thing, and you just clean it off a little. You put a block and you move forward. But you're on your you're 100, 120 feet in the air on this little cow trolley above uh, above metal down there. And uh, if you fall, you're dead. And uh, I had my screwdriver, and the guy was on the next crane rail next to me, and I, I dropped my screwdriver. I was like, oh, fuck. And he goes, yep, Joe, should have tied a string around that. And I said, yeah, I know. And uh, I didn't have another screwdriver, so I was going to have to take this half-hour trek back down the trolley, down the ladder, and then lower myself down, go get the screwdriver, and make the half-hour trek back up there. And what this guy did is he uh, he 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 unhooked his trolley, he grabbed a hold, and he swung over to me, and he placed the uh, screwdriver right on my th on my uh, on my cart, and then he swung back and landed back on his trolley. He's been doing it this kind of work for so long. He felt so comfortable, 120 feet in the air. It was like an athletic feat of holy excellence. Shit. A little tear ran down my eye. I was like, "Holy shit! Did he just do that?" That's remarkable, man. It, it's remarkable, and then you see these things at work uh, all the time. You know, men doing just you know, a guy you you. you he went, uh, there's a barrel of oil, two guys are pushing, and one guy, he walks up, the alpha walks up and grabs it, picks it up and carries it and puts it down for him. It's like, oh, that's 400 pounds, dude. <laughs> no problem, you know. That's beauty. It's it's beauty. It's beautiful. It is beauty. That's beautiful maleness right there, yeah. That's the essence of what's great about men, just right yeah. Absolutely. You guys just, you, does any of you guys listen to Liberation Y channel? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's real uh, on cue, isn't he? He's like on the point. He's like uh, very, yeah. uh, very organized and well spoken, and he does that thing very, very good, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, he just really speaks to, you know, the goodness of of the men and males a lot. You know, the valuation yeah. and all that. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what we forgot about in life. About. Uh, when you watch a sporting event, uh, sometimes you know it's it, there's nothing uh, no, nothing sexual about it. There's there's nothing. You're just uh, men doing the things that they're supposed to be doing out there. If we were cavemen, we'd be running around in the woods, jumping over logs, uh, chasing down a beast that's three times our size. You know. Right. It would be awesome stuff. We might not be standing around watching each other do it, but it would still be awesome stuff. Be awesome, just yeah, just to, you know, <laughs> it's it's just that's what men do. That's what we're programmed to do. That's what we are. Uh, we've lost that, and we're bringing it back, right, gentlemen? Uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, there's going to be a need for that, you know, kind of great athletic ability. Well, in the arenas, there's always a need for it. Uh, boxing. And uh, right. you know, sports and and baseball, football, soccer. Uh, you know, you can go out and witness that thing. You know. But the essence of it, you don't necessarily have to do any particular thing to be a to be an awesome male. You you know, it's like you know, just the no. you know, masculinity isn't any particular. Um, no, you do that one thing you do best in the world. Totally. Totally, and that's uh, if somebody's going to notice and go, man, that's beautiful what you do, uh, because nobody else can do that. That's right. Find that one thing. You know, we all have that one thing that we do that yeah. nobody else in the whole world can do as good as you. You know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how are you guys doing? Two hours good. in. Two hours in, just. <laughs> there he is, the shining. Just hanging, but just you guys making it. fun of uh, the the British crisps? Chris, yeah, <laughs> you call them crisps over there. We call them chips, potato chips. It, it, but it is an interesting thing, you know, how American and English they they cross over. I mean, for example, um, if we can touch upon that, you, you know the slang word for donkey? Ass or something. it's ass, isn't it? Ass, but you yeah. also call a person's backside an ass, don't an you? An ass, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so so, uh, how would you spell ass in both both ways? A double S, and I don't know why you guys put an R in there. I don't <laughs> know. Yeah, yeah, you guys put an R. 
I often read that. Like, I go, are they just trying okay. to be polite? Okay, next one, next one, next one. Okay, uh, what, what in in American? What what is bum? What's a bum? But a bum. <laughs> oh, oh. what's a bum? Uh, a bottom, a behind, or it can be a you know a a slacker in society, which indicates usually a male uh, a bum. Uh, okay, so if, so, if somebody says somebody says to you guys, uh, "Excuse me, gentlemen, I just need to go pinch a loaf." What, what do you think that he, he's trying to say? Take oh, a shit. I, yeah, <laughs> I think it's not, yeah. Is it, <laughs> okay. Is oh, it? oh, 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 guys. Uh, so when when somebody says uh, um, when someone's talking about a fanny, what 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 what's he mean when he, when he's talking about a fanny? A fanny. Well. It's a backside. It's an a ass as well. Yeah. I, mean, I think it would indicate more of a female backside, wouldn't it? Yeah, traditionally, yeah. Although they invented that fanny pack that I think was quite... Whatever. Yeah, the fanny pack screwed it up for all men everywhere. Oh, my God. So, okay, okay. So, 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 so what happens if a guy does a cock-up? What's happened? A, a what? He's, it, a, a guy's done a cock-up of a girl. She's, they've done a cock-up. Cock up? Oh, I, that. <laughs> I think true. that might be a British only. Yeah. Hey, uh, Leonard Nimoy, do you know what a cock up is? Not safe to say online. <laughs> okay, oh. what, 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 do, what do you think it is? What do you think a, a cock up is? Is it a cock up spelled C O C K? Oh, oh, I know, it's a hard on. Hard <laughs> on, yeah. What do you think, Jamersonville? What's a cock up? I wouldn't even I wouldn't even know that one. It was well, like, yes, well, what, what does it sound like? Oh, oh you know, I, I've done a cock up. Well, if you wrote it down, I would see that it has a word in there. You know, uh, it, would, it, would, it would say, I would thought, think it would be like uh, a hard on, like. A, <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys, is that right? Oh, okay, is that right? last one, last one, last one. Um, what am I doing if I spend a penny? If I. Um... You I'm just going to spend a penny, gentlemen. You're being cheap. You're being <laughs> a cheap bastard. Uh, what about you, Traversable? Uh, spend a penny. Uh, yeah. Oh God, I would I would automatically think a penny earned, a penny saved. He's spending. He's so he's being. Yeah, so he's being uh, frugal. Mm, not bad. So both similar. Okay, yeah, one last one. Uh, what happens if I kick the bucket? What, 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 what have I Yeah, dead. <laughs> oh, it's too too easy for you. Uh, yeah. you, you you cheated with, with Nimoy there. But, yeah, just a bit of fun I'm there. not. <laughs> I'm a duck. Damn it! <laughs> I googled it. In all fairness, there. Oh, you cheated! Uh, you cheated. Uh, did you Google it? Okay. Yeah, you guys got a lot of different sayings. I, I love that scene on. Uh, on uh, oh, what movie was it with? Uh, Goldfinger, when him and his father and they, and they they put subtitles in and they were talking British, and then it, it told you what they were saying in American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, well, it's something I've uh, I've observed. I think uh, the more multicultural of us will 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 know the these little differences. Uh, don't worry, guys. I, I'm observing your American language. I, I'm learning another language as well. <laughs> I like uh, Eric says when he showed up shining. He says, "Oh shit, ISIS is here." <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he, he thinks he's so clever, you know that that recycled joke. Oh, I, I've not been called ISIS before. Honest. <laughs> Maybe that's not what he meant. I don't know. No, he's, uh, he he's, says it every time. He is. is. <laughs> Eric, you're so cheap. Uh, think of some some new joke, you bum. Yeah, cheeky, <laughs> you cheeky bastard, you. <laughs> <laughs> British sense of humor. <laughs> oh, but it was really big in uh, what was it? Uh, Benny Hill and uh, Monty Python got really, really big in the United States for a while. It was huge. Uh, they people yeah. just loved that kind of humor. Americans just loved it. it was it was kind of our first introduction to uh, to uh, yeah. British that was strange language. because yeah. yeah, because a lot of the jokes are based around the British culture and the British slang and the British class system and the British est establishment. So. Uh, it actually took, I think, of, was it like five, six years before it started before the uh, Monty Python finished in the UK, and then they started doing uh, tours in America. So it, it yeah. was same, same as France as well. It didn't take off in France until something like uh, ten years after they, you know, the Monty Python took off over in the UK. So 
Yeah, we had to learn the language first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we had to learn your English, your version of English. <laughs> well, there's yeah. English and old English. <laughs> yeah, there's there's old Shakespeare in English. What's the uh, what's the best form of English? Is it American, Australian, or <laughs> or Canadian? Or Canadian. Or Canadian. It's American, yeah. Australian, Canadian, or uh, or Sandman. Is there or <laughs> S- South American Sandman? <laughs> South American has an interesting accent down there, right? I'm not South oh. America. I'm sorry, South Africa. They got a funny. Um, oh yeah, accent. the the balls. Yeah. Oh, it trips me out. Yeah, yeah, they've got their own strange uh, uh, lingo and, and dialect and, and accent over there. Yeah, m- mind you, just within the UK, you've got something like uh, 20 accents or something. You've got the Liverpoolian, the the Geordie accent, which is in Newcastle. You've got the Cockney in in uh, London. You've got uh, the Yorkshire, which is mine. You've got the Yorkshire accent, and then you've got your Irish and Scottish accent. Sorry, guys, I just have to jump out. Somebody's on the phone. <clears throat> Yeah, a lot of a lot of accents over there. I'm always surprised how many different how how different British people sound from different parts. I'm always like, wow, that's that's quite quite distinct. Yeah, yeah. I had to switch off there for a second. Dougie was freaking out. <laughs> oh, the dog. Yeah, he was, uh, he was going nuts about somebody walked by the house. <sighs> <laughs> it's the it's the IR, IRS. Oh God! Yeah, I hope they don't ever show up again. <laughs> I have to share that someday on a, what what um, maybe I'll share it today on uh, what that IRS lady said to me. She came to my house and uh, they will track you down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, w- I wish I had uh, what I have now. I have uh, I have cameras in my house now for for when guests come over. I turn them on so I can monitor everything that goes out of my house. So, uh, learned from having women in the house. Uh, nice. But the IRS lady came over and she says to me, I, uh, my wife, uh, my ex-wife, uh, scammed him out of $7,000. It turned into a, quite a bill. So uh, she come over to my house and I was paying it, and I was paying it in small segments because that's what I can afford. And uh, she says, she's just here to make sure I wasn't living too well. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, that's what she said to me. That's she like, wanted them. Like wh- when wh- they do the checkups on my brother to make sure that he's getting that he's a uh, social security. Yeah, my younger brother, he's social security. They, they check up on him to make sure that he's not he's he's still ill. <laughs> yeah, to make sure he's not living too good because it would be a shame if he ever, you know, just got a come up and started living better than what they thought he should be living. And that's what the, that's the way they think in the social services, and the, their job is to extract all the money they can from you. And uh, if you owe them, uh, you should be living like a peasant, you know, like a, a plebe. Uh, like they'd say in British, uh, you shouldn't be uh, experiencing any any uh, happiness in your life until you've got your bill paid. You know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's the <clears throat> keep 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 a man down. Until um, it's like it's like a king situation. It's like you got to pay tribute to the king. You yeah. can't be happy until you make the king happy or something. You know? Right? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's so out of control now uh, that uh, they they say one of the one of the uh, one of the jobs in in America there that's uh, uh, the most dangerous is being an IRS person going out to people's houses because mm-hmm. people shoot and uh, that's. Uh, I can imagine if they started shooting more that this problem would end, but uh, uh, I don't think they send too many people out anymore since uh, after 9-11 things changed and people just don't want to uh, deal with these people. You know, They can do it through the mail and, and seize your bank account now. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Well, um, in California, they have cops going out to make sure that you're vaccinated. Oh yeah, the vaccination police. Uh, really? Oh God, there's all sorts of police out there now. We got the IRS police. We have the vaccination police. In my neighborhood, we got the garbage police to make sure really? they come around and make sure everybody's paying for their garbage to get disposed to make sure 
uh, you, if you're burn, make sure you're not burning your garbage or getting rid of it in the in the other means or taking it to oh, your shit. company. Yeah, the garbage police will come out and they'll find you. The water police will come out and make sure you're not distilling your own water or giving your own water. Uh, Unbelievable. Sure yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, my my buddy, he stopped his uh, he stopped his garbage pickup, and he and he, he's like, Joe, maybe this is paranoid. But there's this guy following me around now, and yeah. uh, I think he's from the city. And I said, "Oh, that's the garbage police." <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. They, I can't. They're making sure he doesn't put his garbage in dumpster somewhere, or he's not disposing of it illegally. Make sure he's not burning. You're allowed to burn in your backyard in my area, so you can do that. Good. You save, you save yourself the forty bucks or fifty. It's not that much, you know. I would just say pay it because it's not worth the pressure they're going to put on you. But uh, but it sure is an erosion of our liberties. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah they're going to send spies to your house to make sure you're you're uh, yeah. <laughs> it's communist Russia. That's what we're turning into, man. It's just, yeah. It's tragic. I, yeah, I remember back when I was like 18, 19, 20 years old, I had a Hispanic friend, and I didn't understand the difference between socialism in Mexico and um, in America. He had to explain it to me, and he said, Joe, imagine this. He says, this is the difference between the two countries. When your tree there in your yard uh, gets overgrown, what do you do? And I said, well, we cut off the branches, we trim it back, and that way it doesn't fall into the neighbor's yard. He said, now in Mexico, what they do is the is the police of chief sends his brother-in-law over, he cuts it down, and then he charges you for it. That's what our system's becoming. Uh, if, you, if your tree overgrows into your neighbor, he makes a complaint, they're going to come out, cut it down, and charge you for it. And we are becoming more and more uh, socialist in that, in, that, uh, in that sense. Very much so. Very much so. Maybe, yeah, we're pretty much already there. With the litigation and the litigiousness, we've lost all our freedom, guys. It's it's pathetic. It's really sad. I guess what we should probably just do is go and watch the Super Bowl and then like pretend that none of it exists. Yeah, <laughs> go watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, it is about that time, and uh, we're running up on two hours here. And uh, it's freaking another awesome hangout, though. It was another awesome. Great talking to you guys. Another awesome Sunday yes. hanging out. I appreciate all the guys showing up today, and uh, uh, we try to keep it real MGTOW around here and uh, explain why we do these things that we do in case somebody's wandering through once in a while and uh, just wants to take in a little how we think and why why we do these things. And uh, it was a good talk, guys. Uh, thanks for coming in, uh, Dr. McCoy. Thank you. Hope to come back again. Oh yeah, yeah. You, uh, yeah. Uh, he's kind of experimenting with this. He wants to get more comfortable in this, and I know how hard it is getting comfortable in these situations. Uh, it was hard for me. Uh, I think I told you the story. The first hangout I went into was Shining, and then there was Messenger, but there was Barbarossa, there was Nico, there was Dark Knight, Teared Flinging Monkey, and uh, and I and I just this was my first hangout, and I was like, oh god. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All the heavy hitters in one place. Yeah, Walking I was like, oh, oh man, I'm I'm so outmatched here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, we get more comfortable with this and uh, a lot of people say, you know, Joe, you'll talk twenty four seven if no one shuts you up. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much to say. There's lots yeah. to be said. So yeah. uh uh thanks everybody for coming in. Thanks, McCoy, mm -hmm. thanks, Mel Feelings and uh we will uh, do this again someday uh, soon. MGTOW Nation, all roads lead to MGTOW. Or what? Hold yeah. on a second, there, Rex. He's oh, dead, Rex. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> or he's dead, Jim. <laughs> Can you hold one second there? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to shut this broadcast off and... Uh, and uh,